Hey, welcome back to another Tools to Motivation live training session along with my co-host, Marie Mack. Marie, you're on mute. Once you unmute, say hello. Hello. Thank you so much. I'm so glad everybody's here. Um, every other week, we are bringing in some really amazing people, and today is no different. Um, you guys are here because you are excited about hearing about AI. Um, Chad is here. Justin, would you like to introduce Chad? Because you know Chad a little bit longer than I do. Yes, I will take that over from here. And folks that are, that are here live, please pop into the chat and say hello. And if you're watching on the recording, leave a comment, say hello, let us know where you're coming from and your questions as well, live or recorded. We want, we're going to get back to you. Chad Fullerton is our guest today. Hello. Chad, hello. Hey, Chad's a good friend of mine. We've been doing business together and been friends together for many years. Uh, he's been a great supporter of Tools to Motivation. In fact, he was a supporter of our original PLR company as well. Um, we met at a live conference uh, probably about a decade ago, and we just kind of hit it off there. And uh, things have been going well ever since. If you've been a follower of, of Tools to Motivation for any length of time, you've probably seen Chad on some of our other free trainings, some of our paid trainings. He even comes into our members area and does custom stuff. Uh, he is our go-to guy for all things tools and tech because... I'm really, really busy at Tools to Motivation running the team and doing everything that we do, making sure we get lots of great PLR content built for you folks. Uh, that means I fall behind on a lot of other things, staying up to speed on what tools are coming out, what technology is taking over, how people are running their sales funnels, how people are doing customer service and all that great stuff. We have our set of tools at TFM, but then I forget about the rest. So I always go to Chad and say, Chad, What's the deal? <laughs> so he's my eyes and ears. He's all of our eyes and ears uh, on the tech side of things. And today, as you saw in the invite, he's going to be sharing some pretty interesting ideas and concepts about uh, AI tools and how it impacts your PLR content and usage and just tools in general that you should be aware of, uh, as well as a very interesting uh, offer something special that we're doing here. It's only available now on this specific training. So I do want you, uh, I do encourage you to stick around the entire time for that. Uh, Chad, with no further ado, I'm going to pass it over to you. I know you've got a lot planned here and I don't want to take up too much of your time. Let's dive in. Sure. Let me uh, get my screen going here. Excellent. I'm just going to pop in. I see, oh, we got someone from Brampton, which is only like 30 minutes for me. Julian and Clyde. Really, we got some locals. There there we go. Go. I love to see that. Yeah, we see your screen there, Chad. Looking good. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks for joining us on this training, guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be talking about uh, this is a jam packed presentation, right? We got a lot of tools to go through. This is going to be a real tool heavy presentation. I know that you guys like tools. So uh, <laughs> we're going to be talking about how we can use AI to enhance our PLR, uh, but also expand on it and turn it into, transform it into different things. Uh, we're going to talk about um, the the current state of AI because AI is changing so rapidly. Uh, we really uh, are just keeping up. Like literally, I had to change this presentation uh, just a few days ago because last week, a lot of new news dropped about uh, GPT-4 and a bunch of other things, which we'll get into in a second. But um, if you are currently using AI in your business, just type yes in the chat. I want to be uh, interactive here and just get a, a sense of where you guys are at with everything. Um, we got a really com great conversations going here. Yeah, there's uh, it's all yeses. Some people just all getting yeses started and uh, <laughs> just started. Okay, perfect. We got a few people, but lots of yeses. Okay, great. Um, so feel free to, to jump in on the chat and share your uh, your thoughts on what tools you're using when we get to the tool section and um, and how you're using it in your business because this is real. We're on the cusp of of something new, right? Like this wasn't used six months ago, really. We, we really got into AI just in the last few months when chat GPT became such mainstream uh, uh, topics. And, and we're really, we're really getting into how figuring out how and which tools we want to use uh, to integrate into our workflow in our uh, content creation strategies. So that's what we're going to talk, talk about today. And uh, I'll just go to my next slide here. Let me just make sure this is all working here. There we go. So today's agenda, we're going to be talking about uh, where, where AI is at right now. And probably by the time that this replay goes out, it'll be changed again because there's so many new things. Every single day, there's new tools coming out that I'm discovering. I've been on, uh, on top of AI from, from, uh, from the beginning. You know, I was one of the early beta testers to open AI and GPT, the early stages of GPT. Um, 
back when uh, you probably you, probably you've heard about Jasper. I was one of the beta users of Jasper before it was Jasper, um, and I've been on top of all the new tools and just uh, figuring out how I can incorporate it into my business. Because if you don't know me, I run a uh, content marketing and design agency. And we do lots of blogging and content creation for clients every single day. So we 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 wanted to come up with ways to uh, integrate this into our own workflow and come up with ways to come up with uh, blog posts and uh, new content for digital products, membership sites. We have a lot of coach clients that uh, that do projects with uh, uh, for training and webinars and uh, and courses. So I know a lot of you are, you build mini courses, you have membership websites, you do blogging, and this presentation is going to be tailored towards that sort of audience. So uh, if that's what you do, type yes in the chat, and we're going to be, uh, we're going to be going all in on AI today. We're going to be talking about how to transform content, you know, creating content from AI. We, we know that we've used uh, tools like Jasper and, and, uh, and chat GPT ourselves, um, that we're not going to focus too much on the creation side. We're going to focus more on the transforming side because, uh, we have PLR content from tools for innovation. How do we use that and leverage that and turn it into something even better uh, and unique for our business? So we're going to be talking about how that they, the two converge, how do we take AI and PLR and make it even cooler? Uh, we're going to talk about repurposing, uh, turning things into different formats. We've got a whole bunch of tools to cover today. Um, and uh, I'm also going to be giving a, a download to my list of tools. So don't worry about writing them all down. I'll have a link that I'll send uh, Justin that we can put in the replay emails uh, for you to download all the tools. Okay, so don't worry about scribbling, but make sure you have a notebook and you have notes um, because we are going to do a, a little giveaway at the end. Um I'm going to give away my my big content kit that I've uh, that I built. I launched it uh, last year, just uh, um, uh, for it's it's worth around a hundred bucks. So we're going to be launching giving that away to someone based on some questions I'm going to quiz you guys on. So uh, make sure you're taking notes, and uh, and we'll do that at the end. We're going to try and keep this to about ninety minutes or an hour and a half. So. Um, Around and I know some of you have to leave in, in an hour, so we'll try and get all the the meat and potatoes in before uh, two o'clock Eastern, and uh, and then we'll jump into more tools. And I'll stick around if you guys have any questions. We'll probably be on here uh, for a while answering questions about AI. All right. So first of all, uh, lots of stuff happened in the AI industry in the last week. Uh, just just the last week, uh, we had GPT-4 announced. We had Google trying to catch up with all their AI uh, API stuff. So we'll go into that in a second. But for those of you who are just getting started with AI, because I know in the chat, some of you said you were just getting started. Uh, some people even got access to Google's uh, API. Perfect. Uh, Sharon uh, Sheldon's just got access. Awesome. Uh, yeah, we have uh, some people who are just starting out. They're just dipping their toes in AI. They've heard all the chatter about it. But how can I actually use it? How does it work? What are some of the tools I should be looking out for? And we'll talk about those. Um, but just so everyone's on the same page for this presentation, uh, GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Um, yes, I don't under fully understand what that means, uh, but uh, I'll explain in a brief uh, couple minutes just how this all works. Because um, there's a, a, a very uh, common mis- um, uh, mis misdrewed uh, thought of what AI is. AI isn't plagiarizing content. It isn't just taking content and just um, spitting out something that's already been written um, from books and things like that. A lot of people think that, that that's how it works. No, it doesn't work that way. How it works is it's pre-trained on a data model, language model, um, and OpenAI, which is the biggest uh, company with the biggest, uh, the biggest um, uh, AI API, uh, GPT, uh, they, theirs is terabytes, billions and billions of data points. So they've, they've inserted, um, uh, trained it on millions and millions of web pages and books and all this different content. But the way that it works is it uses an algorithm to predict word by word, um, essentially what a human would write next. So just think of it like the AI is just trying to figure out what a human would write next. It's taken all the knowledge of the world, all these different data points and different humans writing different styles and things like that. And it's mixed them all together into this blended vat of, uh, of, of human uh, writing styles and, and knowledge. 
And it's just spitting out what it thinks based on a predictive model, the next word would be based on what it's writing. So it is everything is unique. Every time that you run it, it's going to give you something different because the way that it predicts uh, changes and varies uh, based on what you've input into it, right? So it's the, the, the chances of a plagiarized paragraph coming out of this is so small because it's really going word by word. So just keep that in mind. Um, nope, there we go. Uh, so let's just talk about the timeline really quick because AI is is coming to the mainstream just recently, but it isn't new. You know, AI GPT one, the first version, was released back in 2018. So uh, you know, a few years back. Um, but really, it's only come to the mainstream when GPT-3 was released, and that's in 2020. And the reason why is because GPT-1 and 2 were really you know, pretty poor quality. <laughs> what, what came out of those, you really couldn't uh, use for anything, um, like a, a, a blog post, for example. Um, it just wasn't there yet. But when we got to GPT-3 in 2020, that's when uh, things changed because OpenAI became closed AI. <laughs> they, they closed it off. It's not open source anymore. Uh, and they really went, they got a huge investment from Microsoft, hundreds of millions of dollars, and really started to ramp things up. So we got GPT-3, that was released uh, middle of, G of uh, 2020, and then GPT-3.5 was released in 2022, just last year, really uh, end of last year, and uh, people started to get access to it in December, and that is what ChatGPT uh, runs on, uh, GPT-3.5. And so... Um, it essentially is a interface uh, on top of GPT 3.5 just to have that chat type of um, uh, interface. But really, the underlying engine underneath that is called GPT 3.5. And then GPT 4, which is uh, the newest version, was just released March 14th. So we're talking just, just recently, right? Um, and uh, we everyone's applying to get access to their API. Um, uh, everyone's on a wait list, and they're slowly rolling that out. So... Uh, Really, things are moving so quickly that uh, we're going to see so many new features and opportunities and possibilities happen in the next few months. I am super excited. So if you're excited as I am, say yes in the chat. Let's see how excited you guys are. Um, just, just look at the adoption rate. Um, <laughs> five days to hit a million users for chat, chat GPT. And look at this. Like Netflix took three and a half years to get to that. Uh, so just things are spreading so quickly through social media and everyone using this. Um, the adoption rate is very fast. 100 million users ChatGPT got in two months. Just think about that. 100 million people were using it in just two months. So uh, if you haven't jumped on the bandwagon yet, <laughs> then you're going to be left behind. You really need to understand what AI is being used for and how you can use it and what the tools are so that uh, you have that advantage that your competition has. Uh, just going to the chat. We got a lot of people that are using uh, using phrase chat GPT. Yeah, perfect. Um, all these tools have been around just they're just recent, right? Um, in the last year, so uh, it's really ramping up with what we can do with AI. Uh, just talking about GPT four for one moment here because it really deserves its own slide. Um, it was launched March fourteenth, and just look at the difference. Okay, GPT three is 175 billion parameters. So just imagine 175 billion different data points and knowledge points crammed into this uh, this AI engine. GPT-4 is 1.6 trillion, trillion with a T. It's such a much larger model that, they're, that they've educated it on. So uh, just, just looking at the, the, this for comparison, you know, GPT-3, which we're currently using, is this little dot here. GPT-4 is just so much larger. So once tools start to use this new uh, model, which just came out, um, it's really going to change the game and make the output from AI sound a lot more human and be able to tap into all these different industries and niches that GPT-3 didn't. So the it really doesn't doesn't matter what niche you're in or what industry you're in. Uh, GPT-4 will have a lot more knowledge to be able to write things for you, which is huge. Now, where is Google in all of this? Well, Google has their... Uh, uh, their API, they call Palm, and uh, they have BART, and they have uh, a few other things that they're working on. It hasn't really taken off yet because they're just trying to catch up to uh, OpenAI, but they have their uh, their Palm API, which will be coming out that people can access and start using in their tools as well. Um, they're going to be integrating AI into all of their uh, Google Workspace products, which, you know, Google Docs and all that sort of stuff. You can see a little example here of how it works. Um, 
people are going to be able to just type what they want as a starting point and Google will give you a draft. Like in this example here, someone just typed in, I want a, a sales job description and they click create and boom, it's in Google Docs. You have this sort of template ready for you to go. So that is going to be coming down in the next, uh, you know, probably uh, after summer. Um, they they ha hasn't released yet, but uh, they're slowly, really slowly releasing things. But this is the future, right? So by the end of this year, this is going to be the norm. People are going to be used to seeing AI and being able to come up with content on the spot, on demand like this. Really exciting. So there's three main things that we have to think about with AI and our content strategy. And that is that AI can be used for content generation, which we know is used to create content from scratch. Um, and the the speed is is really where the advantage is, right? Because we can come up with something really fast if we just want to paragraph on something and it can do the research and, um, and, and output something for us so quickly in just a few seconds that it would be faster than us going and Googling it and, and doing the research ourselves. So something that would take 10 minutes to look up, we can now have in seconds. And so it's going to uh, speed up our content creation process overall. We're talking blog articles, social media posts. It can write poetry, stories. It can write a whole bunch of different things. Anything that you can throw at it, um, it's going to try and make sense of for you using all of its knowledge. So it's saving time. It's reducing costs. It can make things more engaging, attract and retain your target audience. This is really what we're going to be using it for. Um, it's, it, it can be used to optimize your content. You know, Grammarly has been around forever. Um, uh, now they're they're adding a lot more AI functionality in to be able to better understand what you're writing and uh, and how to enhance and optimize how it's written. So uh, readability, tone, style, all that sort of stuff. And not only that, making it resonate better with your audience. So telling AI, I want to write this or rewrite this for a specific audience and it'll tweak it so that it, uh, it, it really uh, will connect with them better. So that sort of stuff is, uh, I think the most, the most valuable part of AI is being able to take high quality content that we already have and then get letting AI transform it into something even better. Um, also, uh, just targeting and personalization through AI. There's a lot more targeting going on with um, AI looking at large data sets and large amounts of, um, of, of information and trying to find the, uh, the the patterns and the connections and uh, analyzing it and giving it giving people really good uh, feedback of what they should be focusing on. Um, you know, you can summarize PDFs really fast. Uh, Bing, which launched their Microsoft, which launched their their Bing AI uh, chat. Um, was showing in their demos, comparing PDF uh, PDF reports. So putting in a, a hundred page PDF on a financial report of a company and asking it to summarize it for them and and give them the main points. Um, you know, something that would take you an hour to read through, you can now get the the highlight level uh, points in a few seconds. So just think about the productivity that's going to be increased through that technology. Really exciting. So some of the pros and cons, just to summarize things, you know, increasing efficiency, saving time, producing draft content really quickly. Uh, and the focus there is the word draft. Uh, scaling your content creation process, making it faster, getting more content quicker. Um, idea generation, simulating your creativity, getting all that, uh, the creative juices flowing with the types of things that AI is going to give you um, as just starting points. You know, we're not going to have that blank screen to look at when we're trying to start writing a, a social media post or an email or any kind of piece of content. Um, now, of course, the con being that AI, AI content is uh, at least the vanilla GPT content. If you just type in, you know, write me a paragraph on um, on keto diet, uh, it's it's going to give you a very bland response, right? It's going to give you something that's a little bit redundant. Um, it's going to uh, not be f truly valuable. It's going to be very high level, and that's because remember we're 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 mushing together. Uh, the millions of, of 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 humans that have written all this knowledge that it's compressed into these billions of data points, um, and so when you when you you know when you have all these specific experts and you merge them all together, you get sort of a bland output of a mixture of everything, right? So uh, we have to come up with ways with prompt engineering to make our outputs even better and more specific and actually add value to what we're going to be giving our audience through our blogs or digital products or whatever we're doing. 
Um, so again, so many possibilities, right? We're talking about content, emails, blogs, articles, sales letters. Um, it can even work on programming if you are looking to, to do any coding. Um, you know, the copilot is a huge AI uh, advantage that that's that's being touted as like the next the next huge evolution of programming because now we can ask AI to to get us started with programming uh, different things. So if that's what you're looking into, then it, it's going to help you a lot. Uh, creating websites, AI can even set a whole design of a website for you with content in there um, and set up your funnels and a whole bunch of different things, um, which is really incredible because it knows how to code. Uh, image generation. You've probably seen uh, different image generation tools and how AI can uh, transform your face into different uh, characters. Um, you know, it's going to be a whole different ball game in a year from now when we can say, "Hey, I want an ebook cover that looks like this," and it pops a high quality ebook cover out for you, um, and and gives you all these variants. You know, graphic designers like myself are definitely shivering in our boots <laughs> seeing the the possibilities and just the output of AI, which is really incredible. Uh, summarizing content, like I mentioned, huge uh, music. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about some music tools coming up where AI will actually generate music for your podcast, your background music for your videos. Uh, and this is all unique. Remember, it's not stock anymore. So it's, it's unique to you. You have the only copy of it, which is so cool. Um, we're talking about voice to text. Um, there's really amazing tools that uh, are getting so freaky with how human they sound that it's very hard to tell the difference. Um, I was showing some tools that we'll get into later to Justin, and he was so blown away as I was that uh, he he launched a product where um, where, where, where recently where, where we have uh, AI voices reading some PLR content, and, it, and it's really hard to tell the difference. You know, if it's uh, if it's a short paragraph, um, you know the intonations that it has now, it doesn't sound like the old uh, Siri, Apple Siri, or uh, you know the the old AI assistants of the past, where you can tell that it's a robot, right? Um, video content, huge. We're going to be talking about a lot of tools that get into video. This is really the next uh, evolution of AI is getting into video creation. Um, and there's so much opportunity there. Uh, and then just creating eBooks reports, guys, anything that you are creating digital product wise, lead magnets, um, uh, course content, membership content, AI is going to help you get there faster, right? All right. But what about the human touch? That's the, that's the, the missing piece everyone's wondering about, right? So um, how do we get uh, a good blend of the two? And so, uh, well, <laughs> this this happened. <laughs> AI content detectors, right? So these have been popping up in the last month. Um, and, and the problem is that AI in general follows patterns. It has biases. Uh, and so when you are generating content without really, you know, expert prompt engineering, uh, you're going to get something that comes out pretty bland and follows a very similar pattern. Because again, AI is pattern-based. It's looking at prediction models. It's trying to figure out the next word that comes next, right? So um, that is a formula that people can uh, you know, deconstruct and figure out if your content is AI, AI, AI written because it sounds like AI or there's certain patterns that, that can be detected. And myself, having gone through all the different AI tools for the last couple of years um, and, and putting out lots of content with AI, it's very clear after you've been doing it for hundreds of hundreds of outputs that you can start to see patterns. You can start to see how um, it's it doesn't really connect ideas together very well usually. Um, it uses a lot of therefore and uh, uh, and furthermore and trying to like trying to merge ideas together, but it doesn't really work perfectly. It doesn't flow really well. Um, and so there's always the need for a human to edit content that comes out of AI at least currently. Um, and these tools, uh, I just put three on the screen. There's lots of them out there, but these are the most popular, the ones that I like. The first two are free. Um, originality.ai is a paid one. But uh, these tools are great because um, they uh, they they use the knowledge of how GPT the model works and reverse engineers to try and figure out if you are a human writing your content. So you can put your content in here that AI has put uh, together for you and try to uh, to see if a detector would figure out if it's AI. Um, Google has uh, people are always wondering, well, what about Google? Are they going to penalize me for using AI? Well, um, you know, they, they used to say, well, they don't like any AI content, but then they had to compete with, with open AI. So they changed their tune pretty quick. Uh, and now it's not about, uh, uh, should I use or not use AI? It's, uh, you know, how am I going to use AI? Uh, cause it's going to happen. And, uh, Google just 
is, you know, plainly said that they're allowing AI, but it has to be helpful content. And they've left it very broad and open-ended. Um, essentially, they just don't want spam and sites that are just pumped out with AI and no human over reading over things, right? So as long as you're using AI more as a writing assistant and less as a writing production house <laughs> without any human intervention, um, because that's really not ethical, then yeah, Google's okay with it. So um the next step is trying to come up with content that sounds human by giving it different variations and uh, of, of how the structure of the sentences are. Uh, and that's that's really the next thing that we're trying to do. So the tools that I'm working on and that I've been uh, um, using uh, with prompt engineering, we're trying to get it so that we can uh, pass these detection tests and that our content sounds human. It reads really well. It flows really well. That's really the next thing that we're trying to accomplish. And GPT-4 is going to help it a lot. So hey, you can Chad. See, uh, here, go ahead, Justin. Oh, Chad, I just want to jump in because can everybody can feel the passion here. <laughs> you guys can see Chad is completely immersed in this. <laughs> he, you know, not only does he know a lot, he's passionate about it, which is exactly what we needed. So, Chad, just wanted to give you a second to take a breather, but also commend you because you can. We first time in TFM history, you completely maxed out the room there. We, we went, we're down to ninety nine now, but we first completely time. maxed it out. So, thank you, everybody who's here live. And uh, for those of you watching on the recording, come out to the live one if you can get in next time. <laughs> but uh, uh, Chad, I just wanted to give you a quick uh, little, just quick second of feedback there because you've been going hard here and uh, you're doing an amazing job. The chat's blowing up. Everybody's excited. I know you got a lot to cover. So I just wanted to chime in and uh, commend you for that uh, great achievement. And uh, we'll keep it going here. Awesome. A hundred people. We, we back up. We got to start uh, making the bigger room. Size, We're going to have to make the rooms this bigger now. We have so many people in the chat. I love the discussions that are happening. This is great. Um, we're just getting started. There's so much to cover in this. So I'm going to try <laughs> and uh, move ahead here. Some people have said that they've used these AI detection tools, which is great. Um, but uh, I just put in the paragraph from the last slide in here, and you can see that it, it detected me as a 99% human. So thank goodness you know that I'm, I've written this presentation. It was written by me. <laughs> um, but uh, we, we are even getting to the point where there are some tools that will put together PowerPoint presentations for you with AI. Uh, they're not, they're not great. They're not great. They're, they're, they're pretty low quality, but it's getting there. Maybe one day we'll be able to just say, Hey, I want to do a presentation on AI and we'll get a hundred slides and it'll be done for us one day. We'll see. Um, so, uh, these, these two tools are great. Uh, the content at scale one, I love that one probably the most, um, it's probably the most accurate. Um, but the writer one, which is the one you see on the screen here is also great. They're both free. And I like them because they, they give you sort of a percentage of what they think is AI. Uh, the content at scale one, the second one also, uh, highlights what it thinks is AI written, which is even more helpful because then you can make sure that those ones are rewritten, uh, uh for you later. Uh, so AI kind of detection, you know, my, my, my wife is a teacher, uh, a high school teacher and students are, are using AI for their presentations and their projects. Right. So, um, there's, it's a big discussion of, you know, where, where's the ethical boundaries between, uh, someone writing a report or an essay and using AI for it, um, versus writing it themselves. You know, where is that, uh, that line drawn between being helpful and, uh, just, you know, using it as a complete AI written thing, uh, Kindle, um, you know, if you, if you use Kindle, Amazon Kindle, um, they've had thousands, hundreds of thousands of, e of eBooks submitted to them that were detected as being AI written. And the authors did not put that they was AI written. So, um, they've had to remove a lot of them and that, that becomes an ethical issue. You know, you have to say, uh, you know, in the, in the rules of chat GPT and, and, and open AI, you know, their rules and their terms say that you have to make it, you have to either, either have a human edit it before it goes out or you have to make it very clear that it is AI written. Um, and that's just a, a thing that, you know, if you're selling something, they should know that it's, it's written by a human or not. Um, who, 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 uh, who finds that funny? Like who, let's see, let's see in the chat here. Would you, would you buy something that's completely AI written completely? Not even a human touched it. I don't know if I would purchase something that's completely AI written, but, um, you know, humans do have a value here. We're not, we're not completely replacing humans yet. Uh, you know, our, our passion and our experience do matter. And I think that's, uh, that that's the main point, the main takeaway here. <laughs> Everyone's saying it depends. It's a little tricky. Yes, exactly. Uh, copyscape is trying to catch up with AI. If you, if you, if you know what that is. Um, so, uh, so let's just talk about best practices quickly because, uh, it, it is important and ethics is part of that. So, uh, you know, if you are just getting started with AI tools and you have content, PLR content, you're looking for your content strategy, what, what do I do here? The first step is really assess your current content strategy. What is your content strategy? How are you building your content right now? 
and identify the areas where AI can add value to that strategy. Um, you know, you don't have to use AI just for the sake of using AI. You want to try and use it to make your process and your workflow even better. Um, and if you're not a writer, then uh, maybe AI can help a little bit more. But if you are a writer, you know, you don't necessarily have to use it um, to write everything. Uh, you can use it just in certain sections to make your content even better. Uh, and have realistic expectations for AI. Um, you know, uh, the, the one of the tools that that I uh, created that we'll, we'll talk about later. Um, you know, we have people who are saying, "Well, um, why why do I need this? I can just go into Chat GPT and, and click a button and and write a whole ebook." <laughs> it it doesn't it doesn't work that way. You can't just hit a button and it writes the whole ebook for you, and you can just start selling things, right? Uh, once you start going over a few paragraphs. AI starts to get off the rails a little bit, and it can start to uh, can start to to write some crazy stuff. Um, it's just unpredictable, and it's not at that point yet where it can just create uh, large large scale content yet. Um, and also the ethics. So let's just talk about that. So uh, uh, assessing your current strategy. So identify the weaknesses of your current content and see if AI can improve it. Um, a great example of this is blogs. If you've been blogging for a long time. Um, Go and find your content that hasn't been getting traffic or has ha, has a high bounce rate, and maybe you can throw that into AI and have it rewritten or expanded on and make it even better. Have it have more value and see if you can get more traffic to that content. Um, your you know your best content, maybe you can expand on that content and just add more to it with the questions and the FAQs that your audience is asking. So that's important. Um, you know you don't have to. Uh, uh, try and find those weaknesses and then you let AI enhance the existing stuff that you have. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so pinpointing to streamline your process. It's really about streamlining your existing workflow and bringing quality to your content. Maybe you're not a, a perfect writer. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, English is their second language and they, they, they are maintaining an English blog or an English ebook. And you can put that content into AI and let AI enhance it for you, improve it and optimize it, make it flow better. Um, things like that are really great use cases for AI. Um, and then just setting realistic expectations, right? Um, it really does require human intervention. It isn't a one-click magic button uh, like a lot of uh, tools market themselves to be. Uh, and those tools usually are the lo the lowest quality <laughs> tools. Um, it, it requires work. It requires effort. And that's uh, where we get into the PLR discussion, right? Um, ethical usage, yes. Yeah. So you have to be transparent with your audience. You have to say what's written with AI um, if, if, if it hasn't been edited by a human. Um, and you need to address some of the biases that AI have. You know, you type in uh, questions into AI, uh, especially political ones, uh, they can go down rabbit holes that you, uh, that you don't want them to go down and, uh, and give you some, some pretty biased answers. So you need to take that into account, right? It isn't a neutral uh, writing platform. All right. Uh, we got some uh, some good points in the chat here. Let's see. Yeah, Chad, do you want me to read you some of that? Like, yeah, kind of read, just... read some out before we move into uh, into PLR here. Well, yeah. So I, I apologize if somebody asked earlier. Um, yeah, I kind of got the, the chat's been moving faster than I've ever seen it go before. So, okay, <laughs> so earlier up, yeah. you were talking. This may have already been covered. Earlier you were talking about Microsoft. Isn't Microsoft tying in with ChatGPT now? I think someone already answered that in the chat with the 365. Yeah, so Microsoft and their Bing search engine, which you might have right. got access to it. Most people haven't. It's just a waiting list. But uh, what that does is they've they've taken GPT 3.5 and integrated it. So GPT 3.5, for those of you who don't know, um, only goes up to 2021. I, I forget which month it is, but it only goes up to 2021. So... It doesn't have any information about 20, what happened in 20, last year, 2022, or anything happening currently in current events. So it's it's based on historical data. And you need to keep that in mind because if you're writing you know, trending news articles or something about celebrities, AI is really not going to help you there <laughs> because it doesn't have any up-to-date information. Um, so what, uh, what Bing has done, Microsoft with their Bing search engine, is essentially combined the two and given it the power to be able to look into its search crawling uh, engine to be able to see uh, new information that's come up. So uh, if you're looking at um, certain celebrity news, you can type in something or, or you know who won a certain football game just last week. Uh, AI, the, the, the default AI like ChatGPT won't know the answer to that. But Bing will because 
it's fed the in, uh, up-to-date information into the, the model. Uh, so that is the future and open AI is working on integration with the web, but it's, 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 it's crazy. It's going to be very dangerous just, uh, opening up to the, to the, to the live internet and, and, and letting, uh, letting it loose like that. So, um, they are doing a lot of testing and making sure that it's, uh, rolled out in a safe, uh, a safe way. Okay. So Chad, I'm going to jump back, back in here. So I think, um, based on where you're going next, I, I see a lot, Leanna just asked a question about PLR. So let's hold that because I know you're about to go into that. Yeah. Um, and then there's a bunch of other, I'd say, I just, I'm going to recommend at this point, people just read through the chat as you can. I know the main thing is to focus on what Chad's saying, because we're going to have a printout of the chat transcript. So don't worry about keeping up with everything going on, folks. I know there's a lot coming at you here. Focus on Chad's voice and Chad's slides in the, <laughs> uh, in the chat. If there's something that's super important that needs to be asked, please ask it a second time. If you didn't hear us answer it, I'll make sure that it gets asked. Uh, for example, somebody was asking uh, about what we use on our current offer for um, producing the AI audio that we have. We have a pilot offer running right now, uh, so I'll I'll include that all of that information after because um, I just don't I don't want to take. There's just too much info, right? <laughs> there's so many things to to cover here. I think we're going to get a bit bogged down in the in the details here. So Chad, why don't I uh, I kind of keep an eye on this uh, the chats the chats going on and let you continue on because I know you're about to hit the. Probably yeah, maybe if you can just compile part. some of the questions and we'll get yeah. to those uh, after. Yeah, because the PLR piece is coming up right now, folks. And this is Absolutely. what I really wanted Absolutely. everybody to hear. You can't forget yeah. about PLR. That's why we're on the call, right? <laughs> so exactly right. So yeah. Uh, so let, let's jump right into it, right? So is AI replacing PLR? That's the elephant in the room and everyone's got that on their mind. And my answer personally is no, not even close. Uh, and the reason why is just because AI isn't, as, as we mentioned, AI hasn't got to the point where it's coming up with expertly written content yet. Um, right. So, uh, you know, PLR adds so much more value and, and, and higher quality output of what you're getting, especially with tools for motivation content. Right. So, you know, when you're when you're buying PLR, why are we buying PLR? Uh, obviously, if you're not a writer, you're buying it because it's, it's great content out, out of the gate. Right. But also there's so much more that goes into Justin's products and, and the PLR that, he, that he's that he's releasing every month. Uh, and that is uh, the strategy that goes into it. Like there's a whole bunch of uh, strategy and research research that happens before they even start writing, right? And that research element, AI isn't there yet. AI doesn't doesn't really, like it's trained and it has knowledge, um, but being able to go out and research what your audience is asking, what they're looking for, um, you know, common questions that people are, are asking uh, in your niche, um, you know, only experts know that. Only people who are in the field and actually around their customers will know that knowledge, right? And so PLR, you have expert researchers who are doing the research to find that, uh, the, that, that content that people are craving. Uh, the second thing is that it has a well thought out structure, you know, especially Justin's content. Uh, you're going to get everything made for you and structured for you. So you're getting the ebook, you're getting the report, you're getting the emails, you're getting the, the videos, you're getting, um, what else, Justin, you got so many, so much stuff, the PowerPoint presentations. Yeah. Ba basically any form of content you can publish digitally. I I'm going to jump in here, Chad, just cause I. I do want to say something. We haven't really come out and officially said like TFM stance on AI generated content. Chad's kind of summarizing our main take on it. We've had a lot of internal meetings about it. Uh, at the end of the day, I think if anything, it's just going to, like Chad's saying, allow you to extend and customize the PLR that much further. It'll, I mean, it's ultimately up to you if you think that it replaces PLR. I don't think it does in the in the sense in the way that like tools for motivation content does, because as, as Chad's saying, like we have a whole team that designs not only just the you know the articles or blog posts or ebooks. There's a whole funnel and a thought out marketing system behind it. And as you've seen here, you know, we're, we're offering these bi-weekly free trainings. We have tons of training on the go. So if anything, I think it's just going to place a higher degree of, I don't want to say pressure, but it's going to hold more PLR companies accountable, almost like an agency for making sure that you get value from your PLR. If I'm just transactionally writing articles for you as a PLR vendor, I'm, I might get I might be out of a job, right? But if if you look at a tools motivation model, we're trying to do more than just give you content. We're trying to give you ideas. We're bringing on experts. So it is it is about I think building and delivering more value, which at the end of the day we all benefit from. So again, it holds us to a higher standard, which I love. I love always making sure that TFM is delivering the best we can, and it's giving you the ability to publish something way more unique. That's all I'm going to say, Chad, because everything you, you everything else is great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I just wanted to pop I'm in and say that. Again, to me, like I currently AI is great at at 
taking input content, so taking high, giving it high quality content, and then having it rewrite it. I think that's really where the magic lies currently. Um, and so I see PLR as like, not even in, in this sort of Venn diagram here, but, um, uh, and, and again, one of the things I, I didn't actually, I wish I put in this Venn diagram was another, if I was to add another circle, it would be your personal expertise. So adding in uh, your your own journey in your business and you're, you know, you are an expert in your field and you're coming up with content to train and teach other people, whether you're a coach or consultant or whatever you're an author, whatever you're, you're writing for. Um, so I would probably, if I was to update this, I would add another circle of just your own stories, right? Your own background knowledge. Um, no one has the same knowledge that you have, right? No one has the same uh, expertise that you have. So adding that in makes your content unique as well. So that was probably what I would add in there. Um, also, um, you know, I see PLR as being a base layer and then adding AI as like the second layer on top of that. So starting off with PLR, if you put high quality in, you will get a much better, higher quality output. Um, you know, if you give AI some low quality content, like you've bought some, some really low quality stuff and you put it in there, it's going to give you low quality output. You know, AI is just, it, it doesn't completely understand what you're writing. Um, it's just trying to see what you've written and find patterns in it and then give you uh, something similar, right? So garbage in, garbage out, especially with AI. So just keep that in mind. Um, so again, PLR, expertise, organization, you know, Justin's products are so well organized. Um, you know, uh, AI is not going to do that for you. Uh, and just a go-to-market product, a GTM go-to-market product, having something ready to go as a draft, ready to use as a starting point, um, that's critical, right? AI, at least in its current form, and even if you're using ChatGPT, is not going to give you all those elements easily. You're going to have to still do a lot of work to get it to output what you want, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Awesome. The chat is blowing up. We got lots of great uh, discussions going on here. Yeah, it's looking good, Chad. Keep it going. All right. So let's let's jump in. We're about uh, 45 minutes in, 40 minutes in. Perfect. So uh, before the uh, the first hour is up, I want to start getting into tools. And I'm going to start off with uh, Infinite Rewriter because I know a lot of people are on this call. They were asking about this. So I'm going to start off with text-based tools. Uh, then we'll go into some audio tools, some image-based tools, video tools, social media, and we'll end off with a little bit of SEO stuff if we have time. Um, uh, lots to cover, and uh, and so if you uh, if you have to jump out at the hour mark, uh, two o'clock, uh, we we will be having a replay of this, so you can catch up with the rest of the tools if you have to hop off. Okay, um, but before we get to that, let's just jump into text based stuff. So, um, so. Uh, Infinite Rewriter is the first tool I'll go into just because I want to get uh, this uh, out first. Um, this is a tool that I've been working on in a private uh, secretive beta um, for, for the past six months. So we opened it up to T TFM uh, customers and members uh, back in December, end of December, early January. Um, and uh, we have a lot of users going through, I know a lot of you are on the call right now, uh, going through this and helping us uh, beta test it and give us some feedback and stuff like that. And what this does is this is uh, really a solution to the problem that uh, my, my agency found with rewriting PLR, especially with all the tools out there like Jasper that we've, that we've come to love and we use uh, quite frequently. Um, the problem with those tools is that they are they they're quite limited when it comes to rewriting, right? Uh, you, you you need a lot of cut and pasting. Uh, you need to take paragraph by paragraph and put it into the tool. There's no it strips all your formatting, and then you have to sort of piecemeal go back and forth between your Word document and your tool and copying and pasting and trying to trying to get it to rewrite stuff. Um, it's it's a headache. It's time consuming, and we thought there had to be a better way. Uh, so my team and I built this tool called Infinite Rewriter. Which is based on uh, the, you know the latest AI models, and how, what what we, what was different about our tools? We wanted to make one that kept all the formatting in place, so it kept your headings, your bullet points, stuff like that, and um, also didn't have a limitation. You know, Jasper has a limitation. I think it's like five thousand characters or two thousand characters, whatever it is. You know, once you put a paragraph in there, you pretty much get cut off, and you you really it forces you to have to go and copy and paste paragraphs. Um, the newest version that we just released this morning, actually, with a new update. Um, ha it has no limits. So we just go section by section and let the AI rewrite stuff for us. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, the other thing is um, that we are adding in a lot of new tones and styles and uh, and coming up with ways to rewrite our content, our PLR content and make it unique. Um, so that was really the focus. Uh, I'm going to show a quick demo of it because uh, 
we'll, we'll try. I don't know how you want to do the tools, but Justin, maybe we'll just go tool by tool and just quickly. Yeah, open just I'll, I'll just as you're loading that up, I'll just let just kind of warn people. Like when you when you do these kind of tools live, it it, it depends on network connections. Like things don't always go to plan, but. We've had exactly. decent luck doing it live in the past, so let's roll with it. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you guys can see this. It's probably zoomed out. I don't know how it looks on the Zoom. Does it? Can you guys read this? Okay. Yeah, that looks good here. Okay, excellent. Um, so here's the tool. And for those of you who are are already beta members, just say yes in the in the chat and let me know uh, how many we got here. Um, uh, this is the the new UI of uh, of our rewriter that we just launched recently, and um, it's really really cool. So what you can do is uh, the whole idea is being able to input your PLR content. You can upload it as a document if you have a, a Word document, and it puts it into this left side editor over here. And the right side is going to be what the AI uh, is going to rewrite your content as. Um, and you might have seen something similar to this, but we have some really cool uh, improvements to this uh, this interface that really takes it to the next level. So I just put in a, an article here on time management. Uh, I think I got this from Justin, uh, from one of your, your recent PLRs, Justin. Um, so I just popped an article in here. Um, you can see that you can you can change all your formatting here. We have some H2 headings. Uh, if you were to have a blog, you'd probably have H2 headings like this. Um, and you can you can type in here whatever you want. It's just, a, it's a word editor, right? So you can just type as you would normally type in like a Google Doc. Um, and so we have some bullet points here as well. And we've added some features that, uh, are unique uh, to PLR content creators. And that's, you know, if you have PLR already and it's already been expertly written, um, sometimes you don't want the AI to just rewrite the whole thing because especially if you're using chat GPT, for example, if you were to take this exact uh, article and put it into chat GPT and say, rewrite this um, in a certain way. Uh, it doesn't keep your structure. It doesn't keep your formatting. It doesn't keep any of that. Um, you know, it might even take away some of these bullet points and give it its own analogies and, and its own go on tangents and stuff like that. Um, and so we wanted to have a tool that kept the structure intact. That was the biggest thing and, and kept the main point of what you're trying to say still there, but just rewrote it in a new way so that when you have your PLR on your blog or your ebook, that it's unique to you, right? But we want to keep the same ideas intact. And that's the hardest part because AI is horrible for going off track and, uh, and going on tangents and stuff and just going wild. So, um, so what you can do is if you don't, if you like how a PLR piece of content is written here, uh, for example, this, this these, these bullet points, you can lock these, and uh, this is really cool. So you can lock these different these two bullet points, for example, and the AI will just not touch them; it'll keep the originals. Um, and then what happens is when you click on rewrite, so we have these different modes down here. You can you can choose from, and we're adding a lot more in the next week um, of uh, of different modes. You can write in formal, casual style. We have this cool super expand mode, which just adds lets the AI go a little bit wild and add sentences and paragraphs onto your content, which is really cool if you want to beef up uh, your content. And we have a simplify mode if you want to summarize like a blog post for email and stuff like that. And we're coming out with new modes to transform content into different emails, video scripts, and stuff like that which will be launching really soon. Um, and so when you click on rewrite, watch what happens here. So the AI in real time will start to read and interpret the content. So it's going to try and figure out what, what point we're trying to make. And it's going to rewrite it in a way that still makes sense and keeps our structure, the most important part. So you can see here we have you know, completely different, right? Time management is something that most people would want to improve on, especially at work. And then we talk about cell phone, social media, and all those being distracted. Uh, now we talk about managing time is something most everyone wants to do better with, particularly in the office. Cell phone, social networking, and frequent emails are among the biggest distractions. So it's the same point. It's just worded a little bit differently, right? Um, and you can see our headings were reworded here. Um, these two bullets were kept intact. Uh, and we still get the main points across, right? That's the, that's the most important part. So uh, this is really cool. This is the first step in, uh, in, in really making this tool unique. And also we have this, uh, this ability to expand and rewrite. So maybe we have this point here about uh, time management. The key to time management is knowing deadlines and reminders. We don't really love that. We want to have AI give us some more suggestions. Uh, we have this rewrite button now where you can click this. And it'll give us uh, a bunch of different variations we can pick from. So, you know, setting reminders and knowing your deadlines are key to time management success. Uh, we can click through and see all the different ones AI is giving us ideas for. Um, successful time management is about deadlines and reminding yourself. Perfect. I can replace this bullet point with that AI suggested one. And there you go. So you can go through your content and really just make it unique to you, you, you and your style. And we're adding new features in here uh, in the next couple of weeks. 
for um, audience rewriting, which is going to be a game changer. Um, just think about if you had PLR from from Tools for Motivation on, uh, or say you're, let's, let's say that you are a, a fitness coach and you're trying to motivate someone, uh, one of your one of your audience members. Uh, one of your clients. Uh, you could take something about a motivational piece of content from Tools for Motivation and say that you are um, pushing a keto diet, for example, or you, you are a yoga instructor. Um, we were going to have this feature where you can say the audience that you want that that content to be tailored towards. Uh, say it's yoga and yoga, uh, you know, yoga fans or um, um, you know, runners, joggers, whatever it is, and it'll tweak the content just slightly to be tailored towards them and speak to them and connect with them better. Um, you know, ChatGPT does this a little bit, but uh, not in this way of keeping the structure intact, which is the most important part. Um, yeah, so I'm just checking out the chat. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to jump in and just say here, like that, we've been selling PLR for I don't know 13 years now, and probably out of all those years and all the thousand people we've talked to, the most common question is how do I rewrite? How do I make sure it's unique? How do I put this in my own voice? And Chad, you had that question and you use a lot of PLR with your clients and they had that question. So you literally just created a tool that and that basically solved your own problem. But inherently, it's solving the problem of all these different people we've been chatting through all these years. This is what I absolutely love about what Chad's built here. It's a completely unique tool for our community, right? It's not just chat GPT wide open, you know, create me some content. This is a, a tool specific to our needs as content marketers who are already using PLR content to just get some ideas out of the box, do something unique, and, and then feel like we can still publish something in our own voice, but also that no one else is going to publish. This literally solves the biggest problem in the PLR market, in my opinion. Let's talk about some other text tools. You've probably heard of Jasper.ai. Um, if you haven't heard of Jasper.ai, post in the chat so that we can... Uh, uh, I can recap it real quick. I have a screenshot, I think, in the next slide. Uh, Jasper.ai was one of the first tools. Um, they were one of the first because they were the ones that got access to OpenAI's GPT-3 really early on. Um, they were uh, conversion.ai. They, they switched their name a few times, but now they're Jasper.ai. And they they are you know the, the go-to standard, I think, because their outputs are also very high quality. They're probably my, my, my favorite. I, we subscribe to all the AI tools. We pay for so many tools out there. And I always come back to Jasper.ai for writing marketing content, for social media content, for a Google ad uh, ideas, stuff like that, coming up with ideas for ebook titles, things like that. It's really good at, and it's really good at coming up with human uh, sounding content that, that, that passes the, 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 the uh, detector tests uh, because they've, they've, uh, they've really, you know, honed it in. Right. Um, so Jasper.ai is probably my favorite. They're also one of the most expensive. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, then you have uh, ChatGPT, which is uh, you can access for free. Um, and that's uh, going to really change the game when it comes to just coming up with ideas and marketing. You can ask it questions. You can converse with it. It's it's really a, a big game changer when it comes to making it accessible and easy to, to access this uh, GPT-3 um, a a model. Grammarly uh, is, you know, Everyone knows Grammarly. That's a really popular one for text. Um, and it's now using AI, like I mentioned earlier, to understand what your writing's about. Uh, Copysmith is a really good one. Um, uh, Copysmith and uh, Write Sonic is another good one. I don't have it on the list here, but uh, those two are also very popular AI um, AI tools. Sorry, I mean, someone's calling my number. Who on the webinar is calling my phone number? From the <laughs> I promise it's not right. me. They're calling the support line already. All right. <laughs> we'll have to answer your questions later. Um, uh, Copy Smith and uh, Write Sonic's a really good one. I don't, I forgot to put it on here. Um, they also came up with their own Chat GPT type clone, um, which is really, really interesting. Uh, and that one in actually integrates with Google, which makes it even more powerful. So you got all these tools coming out. Phrase is great for doing research with your text. It also has AI built in, very similar to like Chat GPT style or Jasper, where you can just give it a topic and it'll, it'll write paragraphs for you and stuff like that. Um, there's, you know, this list is so small. There's literally hundreds of them that we've, that we've been testing that we've used. Um, uh, there's also writer. I think I might, do I have any more? Um, let's see. Oh, here's Jasper. 
So here's Jasper. If you haven't seen Jasper before, um, you know, you have all the tools are pretty much the same interface wise. You have a whole bunch of different templates on the left hand side uh, of what you're looking the AI to do. Uh, and then it gives you some boxes to fill in your information about your audience and stuff like that. And then it usually just gives you a bunch of different uh, outputs and then it has a text editor on the side. Uh, this is basically how all the tools work uh, and look. Uh, Jasper just has uh, was was the first to do it. Um, so if you're looking for a, just a, an AI assistant, a writing assistant, then having a tool like this is very helpful because you can write like you normally would, but also just get ideas from AI uh, sort of sitting on the side here when you get stuck or you're looking to expand on, a, on an idea that you have in your mind. Um, so that's always really helpful if you're doing blogging or writing an ebook and stuff like that, just to get a little bit extra um, boost in your creativity. Uh, that Compare that now to ChatGPT, which this is it. This is the interface. You literally just have a text box at the bottom and you just ask it questions and converse with it back and forth. Um, the advantage of ChatGPT and also Jasper has their own ChatGPT chat version in their, in their service. But the whole advantage of having this chat interface is that you get to converse with it a little bit more. You get to ask it questions and it understands and remembers what you talked about previously. So if you say, write me a paragraph about the keto diet, uh, you know, which I did here. Um, now you can say, okay, now take what you just wrote and maybe uh, change it to be for people who are uh, uh, right about yoga with this diet. Uh, it'll sort of blend things together. It'll know what you're talking about. Um, you can say, take this and turn it into a social media post. It'll understand what you're talking about from your previous uh, outputs. Uh, yes, Jerome saying garbage in, garbage out. Yes, it does come back to garbage in, garbage out because uh, if you are relying on this as your source content, again, it's not going to be great when you when you when you ask it to rewrite it, right? So um, that 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 ties back into PLR. You can copy and paste your PLR content, paste it into ChatGPT, and then say to do something with it, or maybe to summarize it, or give me some bullet points, or give me some sales copy points ideas. Um, that will, uh, it'll understand your content and then it'll give you those different contexts that you're asking for, which is really, really great. Versus, you know, chat, uh, Jasper, uh, you know, it's a lot more clunky when you look at it now, right? Compared to chat GPT, uh, you have to, all these inputs you got to put in. Um, it's just not as intuitive as just being able to converse with the AI through a chat interface. So that was really the biggest game changer when it came to uh, chat GPT. Um, so, so let me just, uh, copy everything. Is there any other tools in the chat that you guys, uh, that, that weren't mentioned here? Pro writer aid. Yeah. Pro writer aids, another one, um, which I know people have heard, uh, I've used before. It's, uh, just, it's sort of like Grammarly, um, for, for, for writers, great for authors. If you're writing a, a novel or a book, um, koala writer, I haven't heard of that one before. Uh, Canva. Yeah. Canva does have AI. Uh, we'll get into Canva. We'll mention Canva in the graphics section. Um, but uh, Canva does have an AI that they launched called Magic, right? Um, not that great. It's okay. The outputs aren't mind blowing. Um, but uh, they'll, they'll hopefully they'll, they'll make it better. But it's, you know, it's, it's always nice having some sort of AI button that you can click just to get ideas and just get you started, right? So you get a draft of something going, especially if you're coming up with like an infographic or, um, you know, something like that or using it as your ebook editor, because some people use Canva to actually make the, the layout of their ebooks. Um, so it is helpful. It is helpful for sure. Uh, niche, niche S, yeah, I think that's how you say Niche S, yeah. Yeah, they have a lifetime deal, uh, Niche S, which is great. Um, they were one of the, the early ones with some great outputs uh, as well. So check Yeah, a lot, lot of tools coming in here, Moonbeam, Human Talk. Lots of tools, there's so yeah, many for text. There's, there's text lots. has been around for a while. Let's get into, let's get into the cool new stuff. Uh, audio. Okay. Here's where things get really crazy. So just think about how you can repurpose your PLR, right? That's what the whole presentation's about. Uh, let's talk about audio for a moment. We're talking about, so, so text, we can use it to, uh, you know, optimize and improve our text. Uh, but we can also use AI to come up with marketing copy, uh, you know, social media posts, versions of our, of our PLR articles, uh, email series to, to, you know, maybe you're taking an article and chopping it up into email series or promotional messages for an ebook you want to sell. That is really the biggest advantage of having AI as you sort of marketing uh, copy assistant, I would say, uh, less about the actual content, but more about just the marketing copy. I think that's where it really shines. Then you get into audio. And now, you know, now we can take text and we can turn it into an audio version that sounds really convincing that it's a human saying it. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard this yet, but I'm going to show some of them. And, 
and they are crazy. They're really cool. You can actually build, you can actually take your own voice. You can clone your voice, um, which is really cool. And a new thing that a uh, new phenomenon people are getting into where uh, you can give AI, you know, 10 minutes to an hour of your self recorded uh, speaking. Uh, maybe you have a webinar that you've done or you have, uh, you talked somewhere and you have an audio of yourself for an hour talking. You can feed that into the AI tool and it will actually give you, um, it'll clone your voice. So then now you can type whatever you want and it'll say it and speak it in your your, uh, in your voice, which is really, really cool. Um, some of these tools have incorporated that in, which is uh, in some of these features, which I'll show you in a moment that uh, will blow your mind. It's really, really crazy. So um, you can also use AI to, to clean uh, to clean out your audio. Maybe you are a podcast or you're turning your PLR content into podcast episode content. Um, we have lots of clients that do that, that they, they write, they write a podcast, they use their PLR for podcast scripts. Uh, so once you've put the podcast, once you put the PLR through, uh, rewritten it, now you have a unique script, right? And you know that it's high quality. So now you use that as your podcast script and you can uh, record yourself or use an AI voice if, you, if you're uncomfortable, you know, recording your own voice. Um, and now you have a podcast episode. And then what you can do is, if you're recording it yourself and making all the fumbles that humans do, you know, you're saying, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're, you have pauses that are awkward silence, stuff like that. Um, you can use tools like the ones on the screen here. Uh, I pr particularly love Descript. Um, I use it all the time. Uh, clean voice is another one. And I think it's, I, I think clean, uh, clean voice might have a free version. I can't remember. Uh, one of these have a free version and, uh, you just put your audio in and then AI will, uh, transcribe the whole thing and it will figure out where you stumbled essentially. And you can chop that out. So you can, with a button press, you can cut out all your ums and ahs, all your pauses. It'll just get rid of them and it'll merge it all together to sound much more professional. Uh, that is really, really helpful for people who are introverts or, you know, aren't comfortable speaking, uh, on, uh, on podcasts or on video. Um, these also work with video. Descript works with video. So uh, if you are trying to start a YouTube channel and you want to take the PLR as your inspiration, as your script, um, then uh, you can put your video into AI tools like Descript and cut out all your pauses and stutters and things like that, which is so cool. What's a tool for uh, like feeding in your voice and having it uh, clone it? Uh, yeah, those ones uh, I'll get into next. Okay, um, that was just the question in the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get into those next. Uh, so clean voice, uh, these, the, the, these script and clean voice uh, and podcast are, these are the ones that just help get rid of the ums and ahs and the stutters and things and help you edit your podcast or audios. Uh, if you're, if you're, if you're recording an audio book, for example, uh, or a podcast, um, these tools will all, all three of these will transcribe your, um, uh, your, your, your audio and you can see it in like a word editor and then you can delete certain words and it'll edit the audio where you deleted the word. So it's sort of like editing through, uh, like it's, if it's a word processor, but it's editing the audio, which is really, really nice uh, workflow. Uh, then we get into, um, some other pretty, pretty crazy tools. So, uh, otter.ai is great for transcription too. They have a free plan. If you're just looking to transcribe your audio real quick, maybe you, um, you know, I have, I, I personally, when I'm doing some of my blogs for my personal blog, uh, I'll just record myself with my phone, put on the audio recorder and just record myself saying whatever, uh, comes to mind that I have that I want to talk about. Uh, and then I will, otter has an app as well, and you can just transcribe your audio and it, it formats it perfectly. It's so good. Uh, and then you can use it as a blog post, right? You can take your audio, you sort of dictate to your phone and turn it into a blog post or use that as any kind of content you want for your social media, chop it up into whatever you need. Um, so I like to do that. Otter is a great uh, option for that. Uh, um, Alphonic, I think that's how you say it. Autophonic. I don't know how you pronounce that, but this tool is really, really good at making your cleaning up your audio. So if you have audio that maybe you did an interview with someone and, uh, um, and you, and you, and you're looking to clean up the audio, maybe there's some fuzz in the background, a uh, really good tool to just let AI clean it up for you and figure it all out. Click of a button. It sounds great. Um, Beethoven, which I think is trying to play in the words of Beethoven, but uh, Beat Oven is a really cool tool. Um, this one will actually create audio for you in the background uh, for your podcast, for your audiobooks, for your YouTube videos, whatever you need. If you need audio, 
what you do is you upload your uh, your content. It works great for video. Imagine you're doing a YouTube uh, video, right? Um, you can upload your video and then you can tell it to essentially let AI compose something for you. And it will uh, use the, the power of AI to come up with um, different moods, depending on the mood that you want for your video. And it'll compose something completely unique, completely unique to you. So no more stock audio stuff like that. Um, and it'll actually swell the music, you know, in between your pauses and stuff. And just, it makes it cinematic. It's really crazy. If you try it out, um, you'll, you'll love this tool. If you do sort of video for, for YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, and then we get to the text to speech ones and there's lots of them out there, but I, I mentioned these two because these out of all the ones that we've tested, uh, at my agency here, um, these two are the ones that shine brightly as the winners, <laughs> clear, clear winners. Um, there's no, there's really no competition to these two. Um, this is this, the one, one is called a uh, prime voice from 11 labs. And that's the one that Justin used for his recent product launch, the AI uh, sounding, um, audio. Um, this one's really cool. So, um, let me see if I can, uh, sorry, I went, I went too far here. There we go. And Chad, just uh, so you know, so we're at, we can... uh, just, we're at, we're at two thirteen. So we've got about 17. Sure, yeah. We'll before. see if we can, you're right. Yeah. We'll see if we can, uh, well, I'll, I'll just go through the tools in case uh, we'll, we'll go through demos at the end. If you guys have time, uh, to stick around. So we have uh so prime voice from 11 labs. This one is crazy good. Uh, really inexpensive. There's a free version. You can try it out. And uh, there's some voices in here that sound so realistic. We've used them for voiceovers, for videos, for promotions, for video sales letters. If you have ebook products you're trying to sell and you want a, a video sales letter, uh, you just put your text in and then you can choose the uh, the different levels of uh, intonation and styling. Uh, Murph.ai is really, really unique because they have characters that they've actually built, which are like voice actors that don't exist. They're just AI built voice actors. And they, they've put names to them and personalities to them. It's really, really cool. And you can build your own. So these the, the Murph.ai uh, and, and 11 Labs, you can also uh, clone your voice. Those are the tools that you can use to clone your voice and make your own characters or your own avatar versions of yourself. So really, really cool. Chat, the chat's blowing up with all this stuff. <laughs> you have to try beat of it. Yes, there's so many cool ways you can use all this audio. Then we get to images. So um, image-based, uh, so Deep Art Dali is the open AI one. Uh, Let's Enhance is a really good one for, uh, for making your images better quality. Uh, say that you have a graphic that you've used in an ebook and you need a better quality version of it. You just need to blow it up for um, you know, an infographic or you need it for a large social media graphic or you just want it to be print quality for an ebook. Um, you can use Let's Enhance uh, and there's other ones out. There's many of them out there. And you can give your image to AI and AI will double the size of the pixels. So they'll, it'll figure out and fill in the gaps of making a pixelated small image into a poster size, large image. Um, and it, they've come, it's come a long way with enhancement from the days of Photoshop. Uh, you know, AI is just so cool now where it can fill in the gaps. It can also remove things from your images. There's a whole bunch of things you can do with image, uh, AI image uh, transforming. But uh, uh, especially in the context of PLR, um, you know, using Deep Art or Dali or any of the uh, AI uh, image um, you know, creation tools out there. There's so many. I just mentioned a few of them on here. Um, but uh, uh, using them to create images for your graphics for your eBooks, right? AI can come up with graphics from scratch. Uh, you just tell it the prompt of what you're looking for, and it will come up with it. And you can use it on social media. You can use it for your for your eBooks for um, uh, slideshows on your website for sales copy, anything that you that you need an image for. You don't need to rely on stock images anymore. You can actually have one made for you custom. Uh, it's really great for when you're trying to do uh, analogies or trying to compare things and and merge two ideas or concepts together. AI images are really good for that because uh, they can create some that doesn't exist out there. Like, there's no actual stock photo of what you're thinking. And then you got Runway ML, which completely blows my mind. This is uh, this is a whole suite of AI tools that can do a whole bunch of really cool stuff when you're doing content creation from images to video to everything in between. Um, uh, so, so yeah, I think I got even more uh, things here. Let me just keep going. We'll get the slide deck uh, yeah, too, so Chad. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll get a link to all these, uh, all these links here. Uh, generated photos. This is crazy. Generated photos is great if you are looking to just have like human models doing things, um, or you you have a digital product and you want a human to like hold it up or or uh, or have a, a human um, model in your you know describing something. Um, 
it will make essentially fake AI humans that look like human models are very realistic. Um, you can, really can't tell the difference and you can use that, that on your marketing materials. Uh, removing the background on things is really handy, especially when you're doing eBooks or you're doing designs for your eBooks or infographics. Uh, remove.bg is my favorite, um, but there's also a, a bunch of other ones I listed here uh, and, they, and they're all free and you just put your image in there. Um, if you're doing like, you, maybe you're doing a bio of a page in your ebook and you want your headshot in there, you can just take a picture with your phone with anything in the background and throw it into here and it'll crop you out perfectly. And then you can put that into your ebook and just look a lot more professional with your, your head uh, cropped out. Um, Designs.ai is a really popular one for doing uh, graphics for your sales launch of your, the launch of your digital product. So maybe you're launching a digital ebook or a membership site or something, and you need banner ads for that. Uh, this uh, designs.ai is great for that. It'll it'll just come up with designs for you. It's it's essentially an AI designer, graphic designer. It'll come up with different formats, social media post size, vertical size, whatever you need. Uh, it'll make that that version for you. Um, Canva is one that we all know. I didn't put it here because we all know Canva, uh, but Canva does the same thing, right? Canva can also resize things if you're paying for the pro account uh, into different formats as well. And they have templates, but uh, we're, we're getting sort of past templates. We're getting past the concept of Canva templates and getting to the point where we can just let AI build the whole thing. We don't even need to use templates because templates, again, someone else might use the same template. So you might have something similar to someone else. AI gives you that ability to have something completely unique to you and no one else will have it. And that's really the advantage of using it for graphic design. Uh, some, uh, Sharon also mentioned, yeah, Canva, Sharon mentioned that Canva has a background remover as well for images. I think that's on the pro plan, right, Sharon? Yeah. Um, so yeah, removing background on images, there's so many tools that do it and there's free ones out there. So they're, they're amazing and very, very helpful, especially if you're making a cover for your ebook and stuff like that. Um, social media marketing is obviously, you know, if you're, if you have a Facebook group, a lot of you have Facebook groups, if you're coaches or consultants and you have a Facebook group for your, for your members, for your clients, um, you know, you got to, you got to keep them engaged, right? And so making memes is a fun way just to, to make it, to make it uh, engaging, right? In your Facebook group. Um, so, uh, uh, this, uh, a week ago, my hard drive crashed, uh, one of my hard drives here, I actually have it. I probably can show it on video here. Um, this, this hard drive crashed and I had all of my, uh, my video content for a client on here. Luckily I had a backup. Uh, but one of my hard drives crashed and I was doing a, a project for them. And uh, I wanted to just post on my uh, on my social media, uh, my, my frustration of my hard drive crashing. So you can go to supermeme.ai and you can post whatever you're, whatever is on your mind that you want to talk about. Maybe you want to talk about how hard it is to wake up uh, and you're like a, a, you know, a motivational coach or something. Um, you just type whatever is on your mind that you want a cool meme about, and it will find images, meme images that are well known that uh, fit that that style, that topic, and it'll make it'll actually make the captions. Like I didn't I didn't make any of this. I didn't I didn't choose the pictures. I didn't write the captions. All I did was typed in that uh, I spent five hours on a project and my hard drive failed. And so now we have these memes that are just really funny. They're on point, um, and then you can use them for social media just to get uh, to, to to engage your audience. I love this. It's really fun. That's awesome. Uh, Booth.ai, really cool. This one uh, is great for images. Uh, I, don't, I won't go into the demo because we don't have time, but uh, if you are selling products, if you're selling physical products, maybe you're selling binders or physical uh, goods, uh, then you can put your physical goods, photos of it, uh, even digital photos of products, like if you're selling like an ebook or something, into this tool, and it will actually have human realistic models like these models don't exist they look real eh don't these don't these that woman there i couldn't tell if that was ai or not it looks real to me and that coat that she's wearing she doesn't exist she's not actually wearing that coat so all you have to do is upload the picture of the coat and ai will actually give you models wearing and showing off that product in realistic uh photo photo model shoots you can even choose the backgrounds it is crazy it blew my mind when i saw this tool so if you're looking for uh, graphics for your sales page to showcase your product. Uh, this tool is is a real game changer. Uh, any questions coming in, Justin? Just the, there think, are. Oh, uh, your brain hurt. Yeah, there's yeah, so many tools. I think to we're in. we're kind of Don't at the worry. point now where uh, Chad, even with questions, I think I'm just going to let them let let them kind of go through, ask them, and if there's anything like super urgent, please just ask it again. But I 
at this point, Chad, we've covered so much. I'm worried about overdoing it. So I'll let you finish off your slide. <laughs> of course. We'll, we'll, we'll get the last bits in here. So uh, video. Video is obviously, as I mentioned at the beginning, a real big uh, AI advancement here. Uh, you can repurpose your podcasts, make YouTube videos. You can repurpose your webinars like we're doing right now, a webinar. We can take that and chop it up into bite-sized pieces to share in our social media, on our Instagram reels and stuff like that. Uh, video conferences you might be talking at. If you're an expert speaker, have someone record you at a conference and you can chop it up into uh, into reels and YouTube videos. Um, but uh, you don't have to do it yourself. AI tools can are at your rescue here. Uh, hey, Chad, Lumen Chad. 5, great Sorry, tool Chad. for this. Chad, can I interrupt? This this one I will ask quick because it's a good question. I think a lot of people are thinking it is: uh, are all these tools uh, free or paid? Which ones are free? I think it, I think there's free and paid for most of them. Correct? Uh, yeah, there's maybe like ten percent of them are free. Almost all of them are paid. Yeah, uh, and the reason is because AI costs a lot of money to generate uh, content. That's right. With. Yeah. yeah. Um, almost all of them are going to be paid of some sort. Most of them have free trials, or they have a free limited account that you can try things out. So uh, definitely uh, just go to the websites, and you'll be able to see that. Uh, I did. I did indicate on here some of the free ones, so you'll see that in brackets. Uh, Lumen Five is one of my favorites, and Pictory.ai. We use this. Uh, we we went through a whole demo of this on one of Justin's uh, member calls. Um, one of my favorite tools of the year is Pictory.ai. The, uh, these tools will help you take your text of your PLR and make videos from them. So if you're shy being on camera, you're not, you don't want to be, you know, a, a face like this on on YouTube. Um, then you can use Lumen Fire and Pictory to make videos for you. It will actually go out, re understand your content. Uh, figure out what you're talking about, go and find stock videos and images that go on, that have to do with your topic and put it all together with music, uh, have the key points show up on the screen. Uh, it's really, really great. And so uh, use these tools if you're looking to do videos without being on camera. Uh, Runway.ml, I'll, I'll show you this, some of these real quick. Uh, Runway Runway ML is uh, is awesome. If you're going to try take away any tool here, go and try Runway ML. This one is crazy. Um, you can uh, take images and expand them and and transform them. You can take videos. Uh, they're going into uh, videos and. Uh, um, uh, removing things out of it and transforming it into different styles of video. It just, it blows my mind. Some of the stuff that they're doing here. Um, they, they just last week launched a brand new version of, uh, of, um, of their latest uh, product here. Let me just see if I have it. This is gen one. So look, just look at all the crazy stuff you can do with this. Uh, you know, you can, you can highlight yourself and turn yourself into a Lego character. <laughs> you know, you can uh, you can style things like a photo that you give it, and all of a sudden your video becomes stylized that way. Uh, you can um, change your face, swap yourself out with something else. There's so many cool things you can do with AI and video um, that uh, it's going to change the game with Hollywood, especially with new movies coming out. And uh, and for yourself, if you're just putting together a sales video or you just want to clean up the video that you do with yourself on, the on your phone, in your house, um, things like that, this will help you build the ultimate videos. So check that one out. I really love this one. Um, I think that's, the, that's my list of demo stuff. Let me just double check. Uh, I got a couple more. Okay. Let me just. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, we've so got if about, you are editing we've got video about five minutes here. Chat. Sorry to interrupt. We've got about right. five minutes left at, and I do want to stop the recording at 90 minutes. So yeah. Uh, yeah. And then uh, folks stick around for maybe another five minutes after we stop the recording, if you want to get any more questions in. So, thanks. Perfect. Um, so again, uh, all the tools that I use on a regular basis, Descript is one of them. I highly suggest you check it out if you haven't. It's great for video editing. Uh, Vru is a completely free version of like a Descript type of tool. So Descript is a paid tool. If you're looking for a free one, Vru, if you haven't heard of it, awesome. It's completely uh, free and completely free. Like there actually isn't a play plan. It's, it's a completely free. It will transcribe your video. It will let you edit it with text. It'll generate uh, videos from text. It does voiceovers. Um, Vru is one definitely to keep an eye on and, and sign up for. Uh, let's just quickly go through these. Um, uh, here are some really cool ones that will take your videos. So as I mentioned earlier, you're taking your videos and clipping them into marketing pieces. We do this a lot at my company. Uh, if you're taking a webinar like we have right now, you want to just take snippets and let AI figure out what the best snippets are to put on Instagram or uh, as a social reel or whatever. Um, Get Munch, Video, Lately.ai, Content Fries, Picto Chart, uh, all the ones on the screen here are uh, will do that for you. you. You literally just upload a webinar, upload a video. It will transcribe it, figure out what the best, most engaging parts are, chop them up, put them in a template. Uh, it does all the work for you. 
you. It's crazy how much work that these tools can do. Well worth the money if that's what you do, if you post a lot on social media. Let's uh, breeze through these. Repurpose on IO. One of my favorites. I use this all the time. Uh, this will help you uh, take a, one piece of content and spread it out across all your different networks and format it for those networks. So it can it can listen and wait to use upload to YouTube. Once you upload to YouTube, take that YouTube video, transcribe it, chop it up, put it in a template, upload it as a TikTok, upload it as a, a Instagram reel. It'll do all the work for you. So definitely check that one out if you haven't heard of it yet. Uh, Animated avatars. These are really taking off. I don't really love them, to be honest, but uh, I'll, I'll mention them anyway because it is a popular trending thing of having an avatar. If you're uncomfortable being on camera for your vi video sales letter for your product, um, then you can use DID, uh, Cynthia, or, or, or I don't even know how to say those ones. They're all weird names. Uh, the ones on your screen here. Uh, what they will do is essentially... Um, they will make a virtual fake uh, AI generated version, a uh, 3D avatar of a human. And you can just tell it what you want it to say. It'll make the AI voice for you. It'll actually animate the person for you. And they look very realistic. It's quite, quite uh, scary. But like, um, so all these are, uh, they're, they're completely made up. Like the, you can actually upload your own graphic. Maybe you have a character. Maybe you're, um, you're doing pet food or a pet blog. You can upload a picture of a dog and have the dog talk and say whatever you want in your sales letter. It's crazy. Um, you can also clone yourself so I can take a picture of myself and make myself, uh, an, an, an AI avatar and then, and then, uh, type in a, a different script. And then, uh, a, a realistic version of me says what I'm saying in the, in the script. And it's not really me talking on the camera, crazy stuff happening with AI <laughs> and video. These will only get better in the next uh, coming months. Just crazy. Un unreal. Yeah, the chat The chat is basically one giant stream of people saying this is so much information, it's going to take me some time to absorb it. So <laughs> me too, man. This is this is awesome. Absolutely. So we're just going to wrap it up because we're coming up on, on our time here. Uh, social media, there's a lot of tools you can use for AI as well. I'll just throw them on the screen. Uh, SEO, uh, Market Muse is a great one. ClearScope, lots of AI tools on the market coming out now for SEO and for uh, content research. Um, so again, the whole idea is that uh, there are a lot of AI tools you can use out here. And the the, the idea is to go and do your research. You can go, uh, Justin will share the uh, the list of all these tools. You can go and research them for yourself. These are my favorite. I've, you know, out of the hundreds out of there, we compiled our top list here. Um, and uh, go and explore, have fun with them. You know, this is really the next evolution of content development and uh, content strategy. So have fun with them. Um, I will uh, hand it over to Justin. So you can probably stop the recording for the replay. We're going to jump into questions. I'll stick around as long as you guys need. And uh, we'll answer a few questions and then we will wrap this up.